Hello valued viewers, I hope you're all doing very well. Today we're in the F-15E Strike Eagle and we're going to try and show three different things off. Autopilot, the radios and selective jettison. First, autopilot. It's actually quite complex. There are six main modes for the autopilot. Pitch attitude hold mode, heading hold mode, attitude hold mode, altitude hold mode, altitude select mode and coupled with steer modes. We're going to look at all of them now except coupled with steer modes. That's a lot more complex. So, first, prerequisites. Ensure that our cast switches are all turned on. Him, him and him. Next, in our UFC, we're going to enter our autopilot sub mode there. The first one we're going to show is pitch attitude hold mode. If the pitch of the aircraft, and we know the pitch of the aircraft because the velocity vector here, based on the pitch ladder here, tells us our pitch. So 5 degrees pitch, 10 degrees pitch, and so on. If that's between 0 and 45 degrees, and we were to push this guy here, this is the main on-off button, we will enter pitch attitude hold mode. And I'll just show you it happening. So push. Strangely, it actually shows autopilot heading here in the advisory panel. That tells you that it's on, but that is actually pitch attitude hold mode. And if I were to unpause, you can see it's now going to hold us. Note, we still have to control the throttle. The autopilot doesn't do the throttle, it just does the uh, flight surfaces. Advisory light to know that autopilot is on there. And a similar light in the rear cockpit. Just to prove that it is holding us, our attitude you can see there. It is, and if we were to turn it off by pushing that, you can see that we're no longer holding. Next is heading hold mode. To do that, I'm going to get roughly wings level, and my roll, left and right, needs to be less than one degree. So roughly wings level. I'm going to push order pilot now, and we're going to heading hold mode, and that is going to do what it says, heading hold mode. Note, it is not holding my altitude, just the heading, okay? Let's turn that off. Next is pure attitude hold mode. If my roll is more than 7 degrees up to I think 60 degrees, so let's go like that, about 45 degrees. Autopilot on. We are now in attitude hold mode and it's going to hold that roll like that. Note the three we've done so far will not hold my altitude, just my attitude. Okay, I'm going to turn that off now. Next, we're going to try basic altitude hold mode. What I'm going to do is get roughly wings level, make sure I'm roughly trimmed. It's just going to help the autopilot out. The autopilot can only augment my, uh, the flight controls. I'm going to click on here, altitude hold. There, I can choose whether I want it driven by barometric altimeter or radar altimeter. Barrow will be fine. And then press autopilot. We're now in autopilot altitude mode. So it's going to keep us pretty much wings level. And more importantly, it's going to keep our barometric altitude constant. I'm now going to turn that off. I'm going to turn him off. I'm going to turn it off. The final one I want to look at today is altitude select hold. We can choose an altitude for the aircraft to automatically climb to. This is pretty cool. So first I need to choose an altitude. Um, let's say it can either be below or above. I want to say, I don't know, 28,000 feet on the scratch pad, 28000. Zero, zero, zero click here select off we've now typed in 28,000 feet altitude select I want to tick there make sure I'm roughly wings level to help it out autopilot on it's now going to climb to my selected 28,000 feet at its default constant speed of Mach 0 0.9 which equates to about 360 knots I still have to control the throttle it can't do that but it can actually control the speed it does that by choosing the pitch of the aircraft. If it needs to go slower, it pulls up higher. If it needs to go faster, it pulls down lower, and so on. Now, should, in theory now, as long as I've got enough throttle on, take us up to 28,000 feet. So I'm just gonna fast forward that. You can see the altitude on the right, by the way. There we go. That was, I haven't touched the stick. That's all the, um, the automated system doing its thing. Make sure that holds. There we go. That is fully automated. It's climbed me to my altitude that I typed in at mark 0 0.9 and it's holding me there. And I can turn it off now and it's off. 
That is everything on the autopilot apart from coupled with steer modes, which like I said gets more complex. We'll cover that in the navigation videos. Radios. To show off the radios we need someone to talk to. Let's talk to St Catherine, which is where we're parked. So click on St Catherine. We can see they can be contacted by four different frequencies. Today we're going to be interested in the VHF AM, that's the 121.900, and the UHF AM, the 250.850. So I'm going to write them down in my notepad. Next, click on our aircraft and go to radio presets. Two radios. First of all, the ARC-164, a UHF AM radio here. It has 20 presets and can operate from 225 to about 400 megahertz. We also have a much more modern ARC-210 multiband radio. This can handle UHF AM, VHF AM and VHF FM, the FM used for, for talking to ground troops with. This has 40 presets. The first thing I'd like to do is add some presets in. So for the ARC-164, I would like to add a preset in here, channel 2. It's UHF, so I'll put the UHF frequency of 250.850 for St. Catherine. And for the ARC-210, I think I'll use channel 3 there. And the VHF frequency of 1, 2, 1, decimal 9, 0, 0. Right, let's get in the plane. We're operating from a cold started aircraft, so first ensure our UFC is powered on. Next, turn the radios on. ARC 164 on by pushing. ARC 210 on by pushing. Volumes. Technically we have four radios, but only the two are available for communications. We have these pyramid knobs, so I'm just going to turn them all on. Fully clockwise, you will want them turned up to maximum. All relevant radio information is going to be done on the UFC, mainly on these two sections down here. Shown here is our UHF radio manual frequency in megahertz. Shown here is the current selected preset channel for that radio. And the same over here, but for the VHF UHF radio, the ARC 210. We need to choose whether we're going to use the manual frequency or the preset. We do that by pressing the Grec CM button and it will change where this asterisk is. So currently it's using the preset channel. Push it, it's now using manual and back to preset. And we've got one over here for the ARC 210. Regards preset channels, we turn the knob with our mouse scroll wheel. It defaults to G, guard, 243 megahertz. That means we can transmit on guard or we can choose one of our 20 preset channels. And the same over here. Regards listening to or monitoring guard, we can add that function to either of the radios by pressing shift and then grec cm is added g. We can now monitor guard on this radio and we can do the same on this radio. We also get extra options for each radio so with nothing typed in the scratch pad as default I'll click on this here to get the options for the ARC-164. This tells us that currently channel 8 is selected and to be used. Of the options in the UFC, the only one working for this radio is this here. We can start this option here. If it's starred, it means that we can transmit on both radios at the same time. I'm going to press menu to get out. And for the ARC-210, I can get into the options there. This shows that currently preset 14 is selected. Two options in here, squelch which allows us to clean up the audio signal and whether we want to use AM or FM and today we'll be using AM main menu next let's go and use the radios there are two binds we're interested in mic switch forward call radio 1 menu for the ARC 164 and mic switch aft call radio 2 menu for the ARC 210 First, I want to show you that it is all modelled and if I don't set the radios up properly, I won't be able to speak to tower. So, I've currently got both radios in invalid settings. I've got nothing in those presets. So, I'm going to call on radio 1. I've pushed the button. You can see it's now going to transmit on preset channel 8. Up here, I get some options if you can read that. I want to talk to ATC St. Catherine and request startup. Springfield, 1-1, one, one. request startup. I'm making my call, but you'll see that they do not get back to us, for obvious reasons. Okay, next let's do it properly. So for the ARC-164, I think I'm going to use a manual to show that. So I'm going to grec CM up to here, so I'm going to use the manual now. 
I'm going to use the scratch pad to type in the St. Catherine UHF frequency of 2, 5, 0, decimal, 8, 5, 0. I'm going to click on that radio there. It's now set up in manual frequency 250 decimal 850 with guard monitoring ready to be used out of interest the previous channel it had is there for reference in case i need to change back quickly now let's press the button for radio one again let's press atc let's press st catherine request start up and theoretically they should talk to me Ta -da. and i'm going to abort takeoff Next, I'm going to use the ARC 210. This time, I'm going to use the manual preset. So I can go to manual there and back to presets. I'm now on presets. I'm going to scroll the wheel to our preset that we selected in the mission editor. I think that was number three. So, fingers crossed now. I'm going to press the radio 2 button. UHF 2, you can see. I'm going to request takeoff. Springfield 1 1. Request takeoff. Ta da! That is showing the functions of the ARC 164 and the 210 at the moment. A more complex version of the 210 will be coming later, but that's all for now. And finally, selective jettison, which is actually quite in depth and exciting in this aircraft. First, let me show you what I'm armed with wing stations with two air to air missiles, fuel tanks each, and six conformal stations with bombs and a centre station with a pylon and a bomb. First, in fact, we're going to use an emergency jettison. In the Navy, you would call this the Admiral's Doorbell. This will trigger all carted pylons. That means that means anything set with an explosive charge. So let's show that first of all. We Admiral's Doorbell. You need to hold it for more than one second and nothing today requires master arm. Let's reset. Next is selective jettison. Note, using our armament panel here, we have a knob called Armament Jettison Selector. We have three modes on the left. These are non-selective jettison. That's not what we're looking at today. Today, we're looking on the right. We have three modes for selective jettison. Combat, air-to-air, -air, and air-to-ground. To trigger any of these options, we push the middle button there called Armament Jettison Button. Why don't we start with air-to-air? that will automatically bring up our air-to-air -air jettison page on the MPCD. If we want it on one of our MPDs, we can go to Menu, go to Armament, and it, and it also shows the air-to-air -air jettison. We have three options. I don't know why it has the middle one, because it's not relevant, but the two relevant ones are left pylon and we have right pylon. Well, let's select the left pylon, and we push this red button here. Pow! That bit falls off. The two missiles and the fuel tank. We now select the other one. And that one there. And that's the other one. Why don't we reset again to show air to ground? So, air to ground. I'm going to bring it up on my MBD because I find it easier to see. Armament. Default to air to ground jettison. Now, here are the things we can jettison. Left fuel tank, right fuel tank, middle Mark 84, left conformal Mark 82s, right conformal Mark 82s. With regards to each of these elements, we can jettison the rack, the individual store, or the pylon. Rack is not relevant at the moment because none of these have racks. Later in early access, rack stores will be available. So either store, or pylon is relevant. Why don't we show a store off first of all? Let's do Mark 84 in the middle. Push the red button. The bomb drops off. I'm going to go pylon now, and that pylon there. We can now lose the pylon. So we've got a lot of choice about what we can drop. Now let's do the CFT uh, six bombs. Well, these aren't on jettisable pylons, so we're going to go stores. Push the red button. Off they come. Oh, they were heavy. And I'm going to go the others. That feels better. And still on stores, fuel tanks. Why not do both of them? Ooh, that's the air to ground options. And now the most exciting one, the combat option. This allows us to set two programs for what we're going to drop. So this time we are going to select uh, in our MPD here, armament. 
combat jettison. We're going to make our two programs. It's kind of as we saw before, but a bit more dynamic. So in program one, I would like to drop the Mark 82 CFTs, the Mark 82 CFTs, and the single Mark 84 with no pylon drops. Enter. That has now been stored in combat program one. Now I want to switch to combat program two. In this case, I want, mm, yeah, just stores again. Fuel. Fuel. Enter. And that's programmed combat program two. To trigger the programs, we go to combat. I push the red button once, it will run program one. Push it again, it'll run program two. Program one. Program two. And that concludes our look at selective jettison. We'll cover non-selective jettison on another video. I hope that was useful and see you later.